Victoria 3, in its first calendar year, saw much change, moving mostly positive on Steam after initially bombing in reviews and selling half a million copies, being nominated for Strategy Game of the Year, only to lose it to Mario plus some rabbits. Slightly Homer Simpson looking hungover rabbits. But anyway, moving swiftly along, this video is about Victoria 3. And with some spicy American gameplay in the background, let's talk about how Victoria 3 changed in 2022, its first small year, and what we have to look forward to in 2023. My name is Jumbo Pixel, and if you like this kind of content, you might consider sticking around and joining us for some more. Without any further ado, let's jump in. And as you can see on screen, according to Steam anyway, Victoria 3 has received a whole load of updates since release. Not just patch notes for the various small hotfix versions or that main major update right there, but also developer diaries, leading us in a little bit with further information on both what Paradox are thinking and what they'll be adding. And here as you can see, the key features from patch 1.1, the major update that's landed in Victoria 3 since its release two months ago, largely looked at a few key things. The main features that it talked about were legitimacy and that system of government, but also some changes around treaty ports and power rank to try and stop France from being absurdly overpowered and taking market access from just about everybody and everyone. But also there were a variety of other changes to Victoria 3, some of them not highlighted as key update features, but still worth pointing out here. One such feature, or sort of a more background element to the game, is the AI. Pretty important, because most people play single player most of the time, and therefore you need a pretty good opponent. The AI has been scaled up not just in this patch update that you're seeing on screen, but basically every single one there have been tweaks and changes to the AI. In my experience, it has become slightly better at doing lots of things, including managing and building later game resources after some changes to oil and rubber, both on adding production methods for rubber, but also on expanding actually where oil is in the game. Both a change to the map and to the AI's behavior. Moreover though, the AI was changed and crucially had some bugs fixed across a variety of things, including as I mentioned before, it being able to get access to multiple markets, but more broadly, how it chooses to purchase, build and expand has been adjusted a lot as well. My takeaway is that it has improved since launch, but it's not the key takeaway, the key change, and it's also a, a quite a difficult one to pin down, because of course, every game that you play of Victoria 3 is going to be slightly different, and it's hard to say whether the AI is failing to, or too aggressively, forming nations like Germany, for example, and other United States, or if it's maybe just me and my bad luck. I'd love to hear your thoughts below. More updates, of course, included balance. One thing that Victoria 3 will always struggle to get just right given its complexity, I particularly enjoyed the changes that were relatively simple to things like wages, military wages, government wages, now more important than before. The legitimacy system, the government system, continues to receive some work around laws, political parties, and of course, the populations, right, the, the real people, for lack of a better word in Victoria 3, that make up those interest groups. I expect we'll see more changes on them in future, but some of the quality of life improvements, like being able to quick select the most legitimate government, have been pretty reasonable. Moving along, there were also other, again, somewhat higher level, but fairly impactful changes. The interface, my favourite one probably has to be actually, I hate to say, but changes to the construction queue. <laughs> it's not even sexy, uh, but also changes to population needs. Is there more work to do there? Yes, I think so, but they've done a better job at bringing information closer to the player, less bogged down by crappy detail, and a slightly better user interface, an interface that's easier to work and easier to get information out of. Again, I suspect more work to be done here. And then of course there are a variety of other changes outside of user interface, AI, balance, you know, every aspect of the game. Major bug fixes, and there were so many here I wouldn't even begin to start to list them. Other than to note that it's been a pretty impressively large list of things that have been tweaked. Uh, opponents will say that should never have been broken in the first place, while proponents would argue this is a complex beast and it's good to see regular, consistent, 
community-focused feedback being actioned. If you're already subscribed to the channel, or maybe you've just seen some of my videos annoyingly pop up on your home screen before, you'll know that I cover all of the Victoria 3 developer diary updates and patch updates on the channel, so I'm not going to spend too much longer here dwelling on the detail and instead shift our attention to the post-release plans for Victoria 3. This will be one part of my what's next. What's the game going to do next? How's it going to update? Where's it going to go? Firstly, let's take a look again at that post-release map. Remember that this was released a few months ago, not long after Victoria 3 came out, and it was Paradox's way of saying, hey, these are the things that we're going to look at for free, added to the game, over the sort of short to medium term. And while it's subject to change and not an exhaustive list, it does give us a good insight into the four areas. One of them is other, kind of crappy, going to leave that one out, Three main areas to focus on, warfare, diplomacy, and historical immersion. The other part, of course, taking into account things like UI, late game AI, everything else. What we need to be aware of, though, is that the, the three sort of labelled ones, war, history, and diplomacy, are three areas that Victoria 3 is looking to focus on in future. On the warfare front, maybe the most controversial of the lot, Victoria 3 disappointed many players, it would be fair to say. Its somewhat hands-off warfare system leaves people who are perhaps more used to something like Hearts of Iron 4 feeling a little disappointed at times. I kind of like it, kind of don't like it as much as other systems. I'm torn on it, but I think that it fits with the game, and while it is somewhat basic, actually works pretty well. But there is of course more to add. The system needs to be fleshed out. Victoria 3, the devs behind it at Paradox, have acknowledged that they won't be shifting completely to a warfare system like Hearts of Iron 4. Victoria 3 is an economic strategy simulator game and a grand strategy one at that, and they'd like warfare to be one element of it, but not for it to turn into a war game. The changes that they're looking to make over the next sort of year-ish to warfare will be around generals, improving unit selection for battles, balancing the overall progression along fronts, and hopefully maybe adding multiple, and adding the ability to set strategic objectives. They've also acknowledged that they'd like to increase the visibility of navies, make admirables easier to work with, admirable, yep, visualize the overview of military situations and give us more data as players. They'd also like Victoria 3 to be able to find solutions for when theatres split into multiple fronts. We don't know exactly how that will play out. And finally, they'd like to experiment with controlled front splitting for longer fronts. There is maybe a little bit of an insight into how the warfare system could change. On the topic of history and diplomacy, they pinpointed some specific things, like the American Civil War should happen more frequently, in a way that makes sense and not be easily avoidable, and then more general things, like adding the option to trade states, adding more things to offer in diplomatic plays, and adding the ability to expand primary demands in diplomatic plays. Some of the things on this roadmap have already been achieved. Shout out to Victoria 3 and the Paradox devs. For what has so far been a job well done as far as the patch updates are concerned, I believe. Things like making it easier to get an overview of pops and pop needs are already underway, and a variety of other things. It wasn't just the post-release plans though, and those sort of vague ideas and bullet points on a PowerPoint slide that we have to go off. Since then, of course, the game's been updated many times, developer updates, diaries, blah blah blah, we do have some more insight, some more recent insights. The Game Jam developer diaries where they got to explore and experiment with features were one such insight. Here you can see a building being highlighted, it's a university. A relatively minor thing you might think, that when you look at a building it's highlighted on the map, but moreover that livability of the map is something that they're going to try to get into the game sometime in 2023, including that highlight functionality is well as maybe adding more variety to the actual world itself, ways that we interact with it, or events that are taking place. You can see this also fitting nicely into a perhaps warfare system that's more transparent, battles more obvious, or front lines more nuanced. So skipping slightly ahead, and with a reasonable understanding at how Victoria 3 in its relative infancy has progressed, let's look at some tangible things. What can we 
actually expect from Victoria 3 in the short and medium term? Well, we know that as they return next year after their winter holidays sometime in mid to late January, they will be talking about more on the future of Vic 3. Crucially, about details for patch 1.2, another, of course, free patch update that will be coming to Victoria 3. It'll actually be its second main update as well, so we're expecting fairly significant wide-reaching changes in that, and also, of course, we'd expect them to relate back to the roadmap that we looked at earlier, because that did lay out broadly what they're doing. If you'd like more specific detail, though, never fear, for here it is. The Game Jam hadn't taken away any scheduled time from their development, and they went on to say that they will continue to focus on four key things. Bug fixing, user experience, feature improvements, and balance changes. Those will, and are, their priorities. They will be, they remain, for patch 1.2. A patch which, quote, is now fully in the works. When, how, and what we see specifically beyond that are still to be determined. You'll have to, of course, subscribe and wait and see. One thing to note that was included in that comment is the performance issue. The one area that I haven't talked about yet in the video. I can't personally speak to it too much. While, yes, my game does stutter a little bit in the later game on 5 speed, broadly speaking, I haven't personally had a lot of issues. I say that not to brag, well, look at me, I've been lucky, or have a bit of PC, or, or whatever you might think. That's not it. It's just, it isn't one that I can comment on myself, because it isn't one that I've struggled with. However, I know, and I've read and, and talked to many of you who have struggled with performance from Vic 3, the comment here, the feedback is relatively light, other than to say that there have been improvements made, some of you have reflected that it's worked. However, there are still many people who struggle from performance issues. I would encourage you, of course, always to take a look at the system requirements before delving into scratching your head on that one any further, though. Thank you so much for joining me today in this look at Victoria 3. It's a game that I personally rather enjoy, and while this hasn't been about my personal reflections on it, so far, for me, so good. Do let me know what you expect to see, or maybe, more importantly, what you'd like to see, and Victoria 3 moving forward down in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.